I mean, it's really the Matrix moments of like... Yes. <laughs> Basically... I know wood carving. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Welcome back, back to, to Tentacle, Tentacle Quill. Uh, the... Talk Book. this week. Yes. Uh, Mayor of Noob, t- Noob Time by uh, Ryan Rimmel. Uh, we've got the cover up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I've obviously read the whole series. Mm -hmm. Um, You've just read the first book. Yes, I'm almost done with it. So what do we want to say about uh, the first book first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. my introduction to it, because this is the first time I'm Mm. I'm reading this lit RPG book. Mm -hmm. And my impressions are, it seems to have a certain structure, kind of like, no. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of like an isekai in that a character gets transported to another world, but in this ca- in this case, it is a game world. So let's narrow it down. Like, what yeah. is the actual story of the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the story of the book is a man gets transported into a game world along with a tiny little demon who... Well, so yeah, really like he, he gets truck on. Yes. And then some demons are effectively rolling a Dungeons and Dragons yes. character up, which is yes. him. Yes. And he basically becomes mm-hmm. self aware during the process, mm-hmm. escapes. Yes. And then tries to, through glitching game mechanics, yes. um, sort of find his place in the world. Indeed. And with he also oh, the yeah. assistance of this, like, um, shoulder demon. Shot. Who's like, yes. frenemy? Frenemy, for sure. So what I've noticed is that there's definitely a kind of um, a specified goal that he has because yeah. he wants to go back to that demon door. What would you like yeah. without using words like lit RPG and stuff, mm-hmm. like just using very generic words? What would mm-hmm. you describe the read as? It's a very light read. Very light. It feels very short. Mm-hmm. And it's also very casually written. I'm trying not to comedic. Make um, there's no huge ideas being explained here it is on the polar mm-hmm. opposite end of literature yes indeed yeah indeed. Yeah, yeah yeah so mm-hmm. lit rpg has really become like my mm-hmm. guilty pleasure food my like mud, mud. yes um and so i, I really enjoy mm-hmm. it right and as, as we started off the oh, show yeah. we don't want to discourage people to read mud no definitely got not. so much joy out of it so, i mean i wouldn't be reading this if i didn't think it was fun yeah and I'll uh-huh. say, like, the series goes on and it's really, really solid. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's <laughs> it's a fantastic read. Mm-hmm. There's some more characters that are introduced in the second book. Um, There's also good kind of progression. Mm-hmm. Like, there are... Not to be too spoilery, there are several battles, but every time there's a different scope to it. So it's definitely well paced in terms of escalation. Yeah. No, and it, I find it's a really good uh, introduction to the lit RPG yes, genre. Yes, definitely. So I want to dive into this lit RPG, mm-hmm. which is why I wanted to talk about this, right? So mm-hmm. there's a few overlapping concepts here. Yes. Um, from sort of Japanese culture, we've got the, the isekai resurrection mm. genre. And that's mm-hmm. been kicking around for a long time. But then we've also got um, what's sometimes called progress fiction. Uh, yes, yes. Where a character, it's all about leveling up. And we've seen that mm-hmm. in a bunch of different places. But then specifically, um, lit RPG mm. is... It, it, so the roots are blurred. Uh, there are some disputes, but basically... It evolved independent of Japanese literature, mostly in Eastern Europe, mm-hmm. and then it's become really popular in yeah. like American and British uh, fantasy communities. Mm-hmm. And the thing I find interesting about Lit RPG, the, sh- the short version is, imagine taking fantasy books and writing them for a generation of kids who grew up on video games yes. and don't know anything about camping and forest lore and how to draw a bow and stuff. They're also much more accessible to write in that way because while for an actual fantasy novel you might need to do a lot of um, research, you do need to have knowledge of the game world because... But it was like yeah. that for Tolkien and a lot yeah. of early fantasy mm-hmm. authors, right? Because kids played outdoors, of course, a lot of people yeah. were farmers mm-hmm. and stuff, so people knew a lot of the stuff that came up in fantasy yeah, they... tropes, right? Mm-hmm. It was it was the milieu of the time, you know, it was, Basically, it was yeah. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Whereas now... Game tropes mm-hmm. 
can actually pack in a lot of mechanical complexity oh, into the story yes. um, in very effective shorthand. Mm -hmm. Like, if you didn't play video games and you try to read the yeah. RPG, it would be a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. But because you come with all of this knowledge, and it's, it's interesting, right? Because if you look at all the Dragonlance mm -hmm. books and all the books that were ostensibly based on Dungeons & Dragons worlds, they were traditional fantasy books. They were not lit RPG because in yeah, lit RPG yeah. we actually see character stats and things like video game logic oh, yeah, yeah. becomes mm -hmm. like, yeah. And it's also part of the fun to be like playing around with these techniques. Uh, like, like, for example, this mechanics. character... Mechanics, yes. Because... Yeah. This character will sometimes fudge this or do that or like do leveling up this. is a yes. story moment. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's like completely yes. absurd out of context. Yep. And mm -hmm. as I say, like now because mm -hmm. progression fantasy and uh, isekai mm -hmm. and the RPG has overlapped, there's now a lot of stuff melded in that. Yeah. But to to I think the key part of lit RPG mm -hmm. is that game mechanics are essential to how the story progresses. Um, <laughs> no, so, yeah, yeah, but it's like, a lot of fun to read, mm. especially because I've played video games, maybe not as much as you have, <laughs> but I know <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, your <laughs> video games are your jam. I mean, yeah, they might be my job yeah. in my industry exactly. for 15 years, but yeah. I would have found it really interesting if mm. the official World of Warcraft books rather than being mm -hmm books set in the universe that are written mm -hmm. like traditional mm -hmm. fantasy books were written as lit RPG. Ooh, would I be fun? Right? It, it, it fun. ages them a bit because then like, okay, because they rebalance yes. talent spec yes. trees and everything. Yes. But it's like... But you can avoid that problem just by going with a fictional rule system. Yeah, no, like but I for, think if, yeah. you, like, yeah. if you were going to read the RuneScape book, oh, you would God, want yeah, like yeah. the references to the RuneScape <laughs> shit. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I would want like someone to say, like, yes, my character is male, but I bought a ruined skirt because it's a lot cheaper than ruined pants. <laughs> I mean, that would be so meta. I mean, it's kind of that, I think, yeah. the meta-ness of it. Well, you, you extract so much mm -hmm. joy from yes. seeing the familiar mm -hmm. used to, to drive the plot forward, yes. right? And, and you can do things in the story mm -hmm. that are fresh and new, yeah, right? Yeah. That if you were writing without these weird game mechanics, they would never really come up as story mm. points. But mm -hmm. it feels like, and lit RPG is very new, very mm. new as a genre, but it oh, feels definitely. like it offers genuinely new ground to explore. And I'm still waiting mm -hmm. for sort of the great novels of lit RPG. Oh, also the fun for me is, because I do these things, I don't go camping and read yeah. fantasy novels. I play video games and I can read a lit RPG novel and be like, Oh, that's actually kind of fun. Oh, I've done that one in a game before. Yeah, like it's mm -hmm. so often if you read, especially older mm -hmm. fantasy, and yes. it's like um, the the the, le the leeward side of the tree is where we made camp. Yeah. And then like you actually yeah, have no to idea. know a bunch of stuff about that. And that, that is also a thing, especially if you are not a native English speaker. Mm, that is true. And I think yeah. that's also why mm -hmm. um, the Eastern European roots mm -hmm. came up a bit. Um, there's a lot that's produced quickly. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it targets Audible mm -hmm. more than it does the printed version. Yes, that would make a lot of sense. Um, the shorter uh, length of these lit RPGs allow for a little more focus on what is happening than mm. the bigger thing of like characterization and what every character looks like and subplots with other characters. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of these might lit come, RPGs but, came yeah. out in NaNoWriMo. Oh, that makes a lot of RPG has become a mm -hmm. popular first novel mm -hmm. for people with experience in the games industry to write. That makes um, a lot of sense because they're very comfortable with yes. a lot of the material. Yes, there. um, so you'll see a lot of mm -hmm. the lit RPG authors have done some game design work or game programming work or mm -hmm. are, are tabletop yes. people. That's the other side. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there is like mm -hmm. a baseline of game mm -hmm. knowledge you need to have. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I think we've seen sort of light popularizations mm -hmm. of this trope. Things like mm -hmm. Ready Player One. Yeah, definitely. Um, Sword Art Online. You know, mm -hmm. those definitely mm -hmm. brought these genres to the mainstream. The Ryan Rimmel books, the new town mm. books, I'd highly recommend. They're good fun. Definitely. And I, I would really like to see more um, diverse author voices in this space. That's, um, yeah. Because lit RPG is dominated by mm. um, a certain demographic. It really is. But as a demographic grows older, 
other people will be drawn to it and well no that's the yeah. thing is most of the lit rpg mm -hmm. authors are older ah okay and um i mean it's mostly old white guys writing in the genre mm -hmm. i i think it's because it's come out of like gaming forums and like yeah, where yeah. it's come from i think as time goes on and with the lower entry level entry barrier for writing this kind of thing <laughs> and as soon as there's huge demand as well mm. There are going to be different voices coming up, stepping up and writing these books. And because there's higher demand, people are going to give more chances even to those groups mm -hmm. where normally they would only stick to the ones they know. So I definitely think we're going to see more diversity over the next 10 years, yeah. um, especially also because the whole publishing industry is looking to be more accessible and more diverse. Mm. I think the thing yeah. that most inspires mm -hmm. me yeah. Um, from the lit RPG mm -hmm. just because it makes me feel good is the occasional um, skill progress yes or the stat sheet yes I, I really like the fact that you see mm -hmm. numbers that are consistent mm -hmm. in the story for mm -hmm. me enforces a sort of consequence and consistency in, mm -hmm. in, in, in the story um, mm -hmm. after we talked mm -hmm. about magician mm -hmm. I, I've been rereading it yes. and like it's very hard to see that power scale go Mm. places yeah. but when you see it as game mechanics phrases is like oh, level yeah. five fireball and you're like oh i understand how powerful this character is and yes like, that's yeah. one of the things that rimmel does that i read really <laughs> which is basically um oh i leveled up in woodworking i put a point in it and it's like oh i suddenly felt my arms go gunk and i knew how to use an axe and the different axes and it's just really funny to imagine that just oh okay I now know how to use a bow and arrow. I mean, it's really the Matrix moments of like... Yes, <laughs> basically. I know wood carving. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> basically, basically, like there's a point where um, he rearranges his character sheet and he says it's like, it feels like my soul has been torn asunder. And it's like, yeah, that would probably be what it feels like if someone went into your brain and is like, you don't like writing anymore. You don't like crochet anymore. You now want to... Break dance and woodwork. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, I know what a chisel is now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm imagining you break dancing. <laughs> While woodworking. And see, woodworking, I could see you do it, but break dancing, I just could never, never. But um, yeah, so New Town <laughs> by yes. Ryan Rimmel. I uh, highly recommend the series. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a really fun read. Um, if you want a light introduction into the lit RPG world and I'd love to know what your favorite lit RPG series mm -hmm. are uh, what you sort of take from this and mm -hmm. if you do know any diverse vo vo voices in the space if you do mm -hmm. know like any interesting finds in the space I'd love oh, yeah. to hear about them mm -hmm. um, because yeah and, <laughs> and I think in the future I definitely want to talk about isekai and progress mm -hmm. fiction separately at some point definitely but, um, definitely lit RPG is has been, been my comfortable mind for a while. It was a lot of fun to enter into that world with like, because I had never read much lit RPG before. Like I read some um, bookworm, I, bless you. But I had never read any of Ryan Rimmel's work and it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good times, good times. Mm -hmm. Well, there well we go. that's us done. But as I say, mm -hmm. let us know. Yes, mm -hmm. have a good day. Toodles.